today on America's Court with Judge Ross. So she gets scared because she's already told you she doesn't like scary movies and she gets scared. And I take it, the hot dog with the onions and the mustard <laughs> all, over, yeah. all over you. All over my pants, all over my shirt. And now you're suing her. In my courtroom, it's about equity and fairness. You want him to pay 628? Yes, Your Honor. All right, knock my socks off. Justice should be more than just some foreign concept. I actually want you to learn something. The law talks about something may in fact be true, but can they prove it? And that's what's tough. Fair, firm, compassionate. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Rudy Ward claims his date threw a hot dog with mustard on him during a movie and says his pants were ruined as a result. Mr. Ward is suing Haley Spencer in the amount of $213. All rise. Remain standing and come to order. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Kevin Ross presiding. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. All parties, Mr. Warren, Your Honor. Thank you, Deputy Thomas. Mr. Ward, why are you entitled to this $213? Uh, I feel I'm entitled to this $213 because uh, Ms. Haley Spence over there poured mustard all over very expensive clothing. I don't remember her pouring mustard. I remember something about an accident involving mustard. It regard, it, mustard did come on. She, the point is There she, was an issue of mustard that yeah. landed on your clothing. Yes, exactly. All right, Ms. Spencer, what's the deal with the mustard? Well, we were going on a date. Right. And... Uh, First off, the mustard wouldn't have happened if we had actually followed through on the original plans for our date, which was to go to dinner. And you then agreed go to, to go out with him on a date. Yeah. We what were, was the initial plan? We were supposed to go to dinner first at dinner. a sushi restaurant that he picked and then afterwards go to the movies. Okay. Was there the traditional, I pick you up or were you going to meet? Uh, we were going to meet at the sushi restaurant. You were going to meet? I love sushi. All right. So that, so you, you are on the right track there. Sushi, we meet, we talk, we have a little sort of one-on-one. -on -one, and how did the plan change? Well, what happened, Your Honor, was uh, I was at work. It was getting towards the end of the day. And then all of a sudden, one of my coworkers, he just messed up on a valuation with a firm that we're supposed to be working for, a startup company. So there was me. some sort of hiccup at work. There was a hiccup at work. I had My boss told me I had to stay in order to pretty much run damage control. But you didn't want to cancel the date. I didn't want to cancel the date. So I messaged her saying, hey, listen, I got held up at work. I'm not going to be able to make dinner at the sushi restaurant, you can just go ahead and grab something to eat beforehand. I'll meet you at the theater. See, that's a whole different date. Yeah. That's a whole different vibe. And yep. All right. He says what happened. It's not unreasonable. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Well, I was getting ready, and I did have a dress and heels on, but I decided to throw that idea out the window. Why? <laughs> it's the first date. Uh, I just figured that since we're not going to be doing the dinner and just going to the movies, I didn't want Why am to I getting all gussied up for just going to a movie <laughs> exactly. where I can, I can chill at home on some Netflix or cable or broadcast or YouTube or whatever else, right? Exactly. So you understand. I understand. All those plans went out the window. You see him. What do you think now that you've seen him in person? Um, I'm kind of just like, let's get this date started since it kind of changed. That sounds so exciting. <laughs> I was hungry, so my main focus was getting a little bit of food. Why didn't you get something to eat? He told you to go get something to eat because the movie's going to be later. I know he told me that, but the thing was, I don't like to eat alone, so I wanted to have, you know, I had originally had this idea I was going to eat dinner with someone, and so, you know, not having that change and not having any food in my fridge, really, I was just like, okay, I'm going to just snack on this cheese stick, and then maybe we'll get something when we get to the movie Okay, theater. so now you're hungry, and you're like, this is not going well at all. No. This is no horse in a white carriage and uh, all that other stuff. And you guys go get something to eat? Um, um, we went to the concession stand. I ordered us a large popcorn and soda to share and even some sour candy. And then she requested a must. Uh, She's like, where is the m food? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, popcorn and all that is great, right. but I need some meat. Some sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what? You said, I want a hot dog. Yes, I okay. did. And you were okay with that? I mean, I mean, I was wondering why she didn't get anything beforehand, but it wasn't that big of a deal. It's a hot dog. Yeah, come no. on. Right, exactly. You were going to spend big bucks on that sushi. Exactly. exactly. So that's okay, what, come on. That's what my thought was. Yeah. My, my thought was just like, why didn't you get something beforehand? But whatever, it's a hot dog. Yeah, so, it's a hot dog, yeah. right? And you, Eight dollars and fifty. And, and I take it that the sour, the, the sour patches, is that what you said? Sour candy. Sour candy. That was probably for him, right? Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had the popcorn and the hot dog. <laughs> okay. 
So you guys go into the theater. <laughs> this is funny. I don't know why this is so entertaining to me. You guys go into the theater, and then what happens? Uh, well, we, the movie, well, we sit down first, actually, and then... You know, she grabs some popcorn first, and then about 10 minutes in the movie, she starts eating her hot dog. Okay. Before she... Well, the first 10 minutes are all previews and clips anyway, right? So exactly. the movie hasn't started. Exactly. But all by right. the time... Are you the guys movie... communicating with each other while this is all going on? A little bit, but not really. Yeah. It's not, not really so a love much. connection at that no. point, huh? No. You were just like, let's, let's just get through this movie and take me home. Yeah, and I actually drenched my hot dog in a lot of mustard and onions before that as well, so... Okay. Someone putting onions on a hot dog is the kiss of death. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on America's Court. She freaks out over something that wasn't that big of a deal, a crazy scene, and she just Again, dropped the hot from dog. from your perspective. From my perspective, fine. Because you like horror movies. Right. She's already told you, I don't really like them because they make me scared. And later. Do you have a policy of there being a certain fee that's imposed on people who don't give you credit? We don't have fees because this never happened to well, me in 20 years. Well, then what's the consequence of not giving you proper credit? Closed captioning provided by. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1 888 552 6878. This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Rudy Ward, who is suing Haley Spencer for property damage. Are you picking up the messages that she's sending you? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm still hopeful, but I mean, not It is really. what it is at yeah, that exactly. point, right? All right, movie comes on, and then? Movie comes on. We're about 10 minutes into the movie where yes. she finally starts eating her hot dog. Okay. And we went to go see a horror movie, one that I've been really looking forward to seeing. Did it ever dawn on you to ask her what she wanted to see? Well, I mean, like, it was getting critically acclaimed reviews and everything like that. And, like, it was that just something That doesn't negate that... what I just asked you. Uh, no. Okay. I insisted. You that didn't ask her about the candy. It's the, it's the little things. I love sour candy, but I want to get what you want. That sends a message. I really love horror movies, but my focus is on what you enjoy. What would you like to see? It's those little things that tell a woman, okay, he's in tune to what I like. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know this, but I wasn't actually, I'm not a fan of scary movies. Like, I'm definitely afraid of them. How would I know them. that? Well, I'm telling you now. Okay. <laughs> but, did you tell uh, him that? Yes, I did. I told him I wasn't particularly um, excited to go see it just because I get scared pretty easily. And he's just insisted that it would be good and just to go. And I wasn't really favoring anything else that was out. So that's why I agreed to just You're like, give okay, it a try. why not? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got it. I got it. Movie comes on. And then uh, about 10 minutes into the movie, a jump scare happens. Uh, and then all of a sudden, she freaks out over something that wasn't that big of a deal, a crazy scene. And she just Again, the hot from dog. from your perspective. From my perspective, fine. Because you like horror movies. Right. She's already told you, I don't really like them because they make me scared. And so once again, you're sort of dismissing her, what she thinks, how she feels... So she gets scared because she's already told you she doesn't like scary movies, and she gets scared. And the very thing that she tells you is the very thing that happens. And I take it, the hot dog with the onions and the mustard. <laughs> all um, over. Yeah. All over you. All over my pants, all over my shirt. And now you're suing her. Do you have proof of the $213? I do right here, Your Honor. All right. 13 for the dry cleaning and $200 for the pants. Hmm. Wow. Have you been having challenges dating? <laughs> not, not many, but... Not many. This is like the biggest one challenge I've encountered. When you talked to her before you sued her and brought her to court about this situation... What did you hear her say in response to the fact that you wanted to be compensated? I mean, I just sent her the, I just sent her the paperwork and everything like that, so. He didn't even have the decency to have a conversation with you about it? No, not at all. You just get this summons? Mm-hmm, and honestly, I was like, why would I even pay for that? It wasn't my fault, I didn't, I mean, I apologize for spilling the hot dog on his pants, Then but... the question is, then whose fault was it? 
I don't really think it was anybody's fault. I think it was an accident, but okay. I don't think anyone should have to pay. If you accidentally damage someone's property, let's say their car or anything that belonged to them, someone, you know, you, you happen to have someone's phone in your position and you accidentally dropped it and it cracked. Would you feel obligated to pay for the cost of that crack? Um, Even though it was an accident? Maybe in that instance, yes. Because? I don't know what the difference is actually when I think about it, but... Uh, what is the difference? There is none, I guess. And boom goes the dynamite. There is no difference. It's clear that you didn't do it maliciously or intentionally. The fact of the matter is he had property. It mm -hmm. was destroyed. It was damaged. And he should be compensated. Okay. Is that fair? Does that make sense? All right. Yes. So based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, the gavel is going to come down in favor of the plaintiff. Now, you're asking $200 for the pants, but you're actually suing for 213 The 13 was for the... Uh, dry cleaning. What happened with that was uh, the mustard stain couldn't come out, and on top of that, they just did such an intense job of cleaning, it faded the pants. All right, so I'm going to give you the $13 for that, the actual cost of the pants. I'm going to deduct for depreciation. I'm going to give you $163. That's going to be your judgment. This judgment is really the best thing that could have happened to you. Thank you. Because I what, it. You're welcome. Because really what it's saying is I can sort of know that I'm good with him mm -hmm. but the bigger lesson is I'm not going to go out on a date with someone who doesn't listen yes because that's not what happened here and I had to pay the consequences of that. yes does I that agree. make sense yes I totally we, agree we with good that. on that yes <laughs> all right that is your judgment sir case closed judge Ross has ruled in favor of the plaintiff the defendant has been ordered to pay $163. Bottom line is, she ruined my pants. I'm happy to get some money back. It was an accident, and honestly, if we didn't do all the things that he wanted to do, it would have never happened. Coming up on America's Court with Judge Ross. She got paid $3,000 to teach an online tutorial of my choreography. That's not correct, Your Honor. That website approached me a few years ago. I refused because I don't do this for money. I do this because I like to share the dance But you charge the your world. students. Closed captioning provided by... This is America's Court with Judge Ross. Lisa Hampton claims a former dance student recorded one of her classes and says the video went viral after the defendant posted it online without giving proper credit. Ms. Hampton is suing Melissa Willard in the amount of $3,000. So we've got some choreographers here and there's a dispute over moves that you feel Ms. Willard violated creation that you came up with on your own choreography can in fact be copywritten and through the 1976 Copyright Act. So as long as it's written or filmed and uh, you are a choreographer? Correct. Talk to me about what happened. So I own a dance studio in Los Angeles. I've been okay. a dance teacher for over 20 years. Right. And uh, every week I create a specific choreography for my class. Got it. And Ms. Willard, were you taking classes with Ms. Hampton? Yes, I was. Uh, for the past year, a little over a year, I've been taking her class maybe like once a month. And in the year, how was it that there was a situation where you felt as though your work was compromised by her? So every class, uh, my students at the end uh, perform the choreography they just learned and uh, they're allowed to film it. So Melissa was filming, of course, like every other student, and what every, uh, every uh, student of mine is told, they need to credit if they post on social media. You're referring to them as students. Is it based on the fact that they're paying you to, to receive these lessons? It's yes. not like it's a college situation or anything no, like that. No. And why are we here? We're here today because she failed to credit me, and that's something I reiterate every single class to all of my students. And that's You don't something mind them uploading uh, no. film? And That's great. As long as they it. put uh, the name of the studio or the teacher where they learn it, they can do whatever they want. And because she didn't credit you, do you mm -hmm. have a policy of there being a certain fee that's imposed on people who don't give you credit? We don't have fees because this never happened to well, me in 20 the years. What's the consequence of not giving you proper credit? Hmm. Coming up on America's Court. Is it copywritten? Yes, because it was filmed. You okay. said it yourself. 
and the beginning. That's step one of a copyright. Yes. You also have to register it. Closed captioning provided by... This is America's Court with Judge Ross. America's Court is back with the case of Lisa Hampton, who is suing Melissa Willard for theft. By going viral, someone said, what, we'll give you $2,000? So $2, they $2, offered, they wanted to see me perform on a show, on a TV show. So, or it was on the internet. And they had me come. TV, internet, it's all the same Yeah, now, exactly. Right? Right. So they had me come onto the show and show basically what the viral video was. And then you got compensated. Yes, that is correct. And the compensation was $3,000. Yes, that's correct. And you want the whole $3,000 that she made because you're saying so, what? So uh, this is not the first time one of my students has a viral video. I'm only video. dealing with her, though. Let's yes, talk about her. Why is she the one? Have you ever sued any of the other students before? They credited me. I okay. have no reason to. All She's right. claiming this is her own and, work. And, and so I what's wasn't. the legal theory that yes. you're advancing in front of me right now? So she got paid $3,000 to teach an online tutorial mm -hmm. of my choreography. That's not correct, Your Honor. That is what that website is. And how I know that website approached me a few years ago, I refuse because I don't do this for money. I do this because I like to share the But you charge your students. Of course, I charge a small fee. I need to pay and for you're rent. Char you're being paid to teach students. Correct, but I wasn't teaching. I was just showing. It was more like a demonstration or a performance. It was an online tutorial. Okay. It was teaching. All right, so you both are teaching and getting compensated And she's for not it. a teacher, and she stole my choreography to teach to other people. So you're saying, is your choreography copywritten? Sorry? Is it copywritten? Yes, because it was filmed. You okay. said it yourself. Did you? Well... <laughs> And the beginning. That's step one of a copyright. Yes. You also have to register it. Right. Ah. That part. Judge Ross's verdict when America's court returns. Promotional consideration provided by. This is America's court with Judge Ross. Did you register your, your material? Not all my friends told me I have to register every move I make, but well, now I know. Then that's again, that's not something we do in the dance world. Register every week's choreography. You don't that's have a lot to do of money. <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to do it. But if you want to claim that someone violated something that you created and all, you have to demonstrate because then they look at the dates. Exactly. So if she files it mm -hmm. and you never file anything, it's guess hurt. who's gonna get the credit? I know. I know that. So based on the evidence and the testimony before this court, the gavel has to come down in favor of the defendant. One, because the the work isn't protected, but I got news for you. You can't sustain the burden because this is the wrong court for copyright. And you're saying, but she uh, taught my work, but you can't even claim the credit because for all I know, that could have been work that you saw somewhere else because you never established ownership over it. Hmm. Your matter's dismissed. What if I have my Your own Your matter's business. dismissed. Case closed. Judge Ross has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been dismissed. I'm really excited the judge dismissed her case and could see that I wasn't stealing her choreography. Judge Ross dismissed my case today, but I learned a valuable lesson. I'm taking this to the higher court. Follow America's Court on Facebook and Twitter. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.